Hi, just a quick reminder that Game Guru Max is on special offer in February, 50% off our new version of Game Guru, which comes out in September. And if you pre order, you get 50% off, plus you start getting builds of it from April. So check it out, links below. Also, we're posting sneak peeks of Game Guru Max on the Game Guru YouTube channel, so check those out too. Now, let's get on with the tutorial series. Welcome back to this tutorial about making a simple physics game. At the end of the last video, I said I would look at how I'd add some levels into this game. Uh, and I've done that. I've changed quite a lot of the logic around. As you can see on the main menu, I've got some simple text objects that uh, explain how the game is played. So sort green and red balls into the correct buckets over the 10 levels. How fast can you complete this challenge? The aim is to complete the 10 levels as quickly as possible so the lowest score is the best score. Another thing I said I'd do is organize the source code better. So last time all the code was in main.adc. Well I've taken out the seesaw control and I put all that into one adc file and I've done the same for the ball control. And that means that main.adc is now a lot easier to uh, scroll up and down. It's not as big it's easier to find things. So let's have a look at what's new in the source code. I've got ball count that I use to count up how many balls have been collected during a level. I've got level which stores the current level number and I've got a levels array that stores how many balls are going to be created in each of the 10 levels. Uh, once that's created there I then do level 0 equals 2 then levels 1 equals 4 and this is how many maximum balls are going to be created all the way up to level 9, which is ultimately level 10 because I start at 0. So 100 balls at the end. So it starts off very easy with 2 balls, 4, 6, 10, 15, 25, 30, 50, 70, 100. Uh, I've got a variable called best time, which I've just set to 450. You should easily be able to do it within that time frame. And total time is 0. So the time counts up and it keeps counting in between all the different levels as well. So if I just quickly run the game, you'll see the progression. So we've got all this text, press start, and the game begins. You can see the time it's counting up. So this first level, I've done it within 8 seconds. But the, the counter carries on from where it was on level 2. You've got a level count here, it used to be a score here. That's now levels. So we know where we're up to in the game. And we should be on to level 3 before we know it. And here we are on to the last level. With 100 balls to sort out. Once I get all the green ones in, I tend to then focus on the reds. We've got 191 seconds so far, so I think we're going to beat the initial low score. One more to go. Oh, it's gone off on the wrong side. Come on. There we go. In fact, the text is off screen slightly. Ah, so there we are. I mean, it's said next screen, so a bit of tidy at work there. But 205 seconds is the fastest I did it. And then you just keep playing that over and over. So, yeah, it's not the best game in the world. But I think what will be useful is we'll be able to show how to submit the game to the App Store. We could add in Google Play high scores to it. And we can also do things like add adverts in between levels. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Anyway, back to the source code to see what else is new. So there's the variables. Scroll down. I've got new here. So set string, uh, best time. That's on the main menu. If you go to... Um, the main menu scene, it's this here, a menu best time variable. And I'm using the variable best time to show the best time done in the game. Now, I'm not saving that value out, so every time you run the app, it's going to be reset to zero. So maybe next week I'll change it so that it stores the variable to the device and you never have to reset it. So I've changed the main menu to go from levels 1 to 10. So the, the game starts and then we go here where we've got repeat until here and we're going through the 10 levels here. This is the main routine of the game and ball count is being added to 
as the balls go in the bucket. So yeah, if I double click on ball count and then go to ball control, you'll see when we're checking to see if the balls are next to the left and right cups, then we, if they are, then we increase ball count by one. So ball count equals ball count plus one. And if it's in the right cup, I do a different system called ink ball count. Just showing you two ways of increasing one to the variable ball count. You can use ink, which just increases by one, or you can use ball count itself and add one to it. So once ball count becomes the value in the current level, in so remember we had that variable set up here. So on the first level it's two. So if we've caught two balls, then it must be the end of a level. Then we do a bit of cleanup, basically clean up that scene. We delete all the balls. Well, we go to game over setup, but really that's next level now. Uh, we don't have a game over now. We just run the 10 levels. And we have a little wait, and then we clean up the game over scene. We increase the level by one. We set the ball count back to zero. We add the time of that level to total time. And we do that again until level equals 10. So it will jump back to here. Sorry, here. Uh, when you get to level 10, then you check to see if total time is less than the best time. So if it is less than the best time, you've done it the fastest you can possibly do it in. So then you make best time equals total time. And then you clear total time because the next time you play the game, that needs to be zero. You you zero the time, you zero the level back to zero, and you set game start, which is the flag that we're waiting on the main menu to start. So, those are the main things added. Um, next time I'll save the best time to the device, and we'll look to publish the app onto the Google Play Store and see that process. So, hope you've enjoyed that. See you next time.